set. Hope everyone's good. And just like that, bam, we are live. We're recording. We're doing all these great things. We're on later than we normally do. But you know what? That's the cool thing that what we do, we can do it. We are so flexible. Who likes flexibility flexibility on Monday mindset? I do. This is Carol Sue, aka Naughty Boss, Lady Canna, with two this does hey everyone it's janice aka wellness diva i think i'm still 4.0 we're just gonna go with it it's yep. all good it is mindset monday and the tagline was did we did the sisters forget what time it is and as carol also said no you know things pop up it's been a crazy busy awesome kind of time for both of us a lot of pivots and divots and as we get into um, Mindset Monday, I just really need to do a huge shout out to a very good friend of Carol Sue and mine. His name is Alexander Diaz. Had the premiere of a short film last night called Joseph. Ugh. It I had was so excited watching it. So we just want to say kudos to you. This was a vision of his and it really ties into what I want to say about mindset. And as I was listening to a mindset uh, taping, one of the things that the <coughs> person said was, do you have a commitment to your vision? Well, I immediately thought of Alexander because it was so fresh in my mind and how it applied in my life. And what are you going to do with that vision? What do you think, Casu? I, I so agree with that. And, you know, we are so proud of him. And it wasn't just, you know, he actually had this dream. And we really, we truly believe if you, if you watch it and you really, we had the awesome opportunity to interview him and we want to do a follow-up interview with him. It was a vision that he received from our Lord. And he drew out so many details and, knew where the vision was going and he would have a stumbling block block and then the lord would send him a, a, another message and he just he has this big poster board behind him of all the different notes and and the drawings and how he uh felt when he had this vision and i would really classify it truly as a miracle and a lot of people use that word loosely in some regards and not really understanding the impact when a true miracle occurs and miracles have a lot to do with mindset because you have to be open to miracles you have to be open to blessings you have to be open and, and you know one thing that i was chatting about was with someone today is you know looking at our world and knowing that things are still not right there's still a lot of people that are, are dealing with the virus in sometimes a good way and sometimes not such a good way. And I thought, when do we put the brakes on all of that and get back to remembering that we're never in control, number one, and that's, that's postured mindset when you could actually say, I am not in control. How many times do you hear somebody in recovery talk about that they are powerless to whatever their addiction is that takes posture that takes that right mindset when you have someone struggling with their 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 disorder happens to to do with food to do with healthy and they're very unhealthy and they're powerless to food to actually verbalize that comes again with great posture and mindset so when I look at what's going on in the world and you see this goodness that Alexander has been uh, blessed with this miracle, it gives you hope to know that they still do exist. And how do we conquer the first day of the work week, Monday mindset with positivity, knowing there's so much going out there now? We talk about even what's going on in our world, how it impacts our mindset, how it impacts our, our healthy. And one thing I have to say, regardless of whether you're on the left, whether you're on the right, whether you're you know dealing with the virus, whether you're like upset with the politics, whether you're angry in the way our country is going, something happened last week and I really embraced 
what I was witnessing. And that was to see our leader, you know, the president falling uh, up the stairs. And I, I was sad. Now I know a lot of people did some memes about it and you know, it's been on a lot of different news networks, but I have to say, regardless of what side you're on, whether you voted for him, whether you didn't vote for him, whether you do not like his administration, you don't like his history, that was a human being walking up steps. And a lot of people are refusing to address the issue that he does have some serious cognitive issues along with um, just witnessing him do that. And no one, I didn't see that. Apparently there's a, a broader shot of it where the, some people do come rushing. I didn't see that. I'm just, you know, watching as the camera is zeroing, I thought this is a sad day in our country because regardless, he's still a human being, whether you like him, whether you don't like him. Now, a lot of people say, well, Carol Sue, like you've been very outspoken against him. Yes, I have when it comes to a political and uh, what I truly believe that he's not medically fit. I'm very, my mindset is very postured in my belief with that. That's never going to change. However, humanity also is being postured. And what I witnessed is very sad. And I can say that with full confidence that the, the actions of others, you know, either making light of it or making a joke of it, or even not addressing it are doing a disservice to those that feel like, well, what's going on? Who's in control of our country? Like he, he's, he's falling. He's not in his, in a wellness mindset. So that really kind of took me aback that I would feel that way. But the push comes to shove. You still have to be, you have to be kind of what would, you know, you go back to Alexander's message. What, what would, what would Jesus do? What did Joseph do? You know, you were, you were thrust into a situation that you weren't prepared for. And how did they deal with it? And he was blessed that he had this vision, this goal, and we should only have those visions and those blessings. And that again comes with, you know, he probably had to deal with some people thinking he was a little cray cray, like you're not really going to do this. And yet he saw it through and his posture of his mindset is what carried him. And of course, his faith and love for, for our Lord and, and Jesus Christ. And, and, you know, so to, to witness a kind of a modern day miracle, uh, if you don't know, um, I'm going to look up real quick and Jan, you could kind of add to what I'm saying. So you can, you can actually go and see the clip because I believe it's still up. I'm not 100%. It, yes, I do believe it's still yeah. up on uh, the Actual. Joseph film page. Right. And that's, and that's the, uh, I wanted to let our, our, our viewers know, because if you're struggling with mindset on Monday, on Monday mindset, um, you know, Take a look at this film, and I'm trying to see where it says the name of it, uh, the website. I'm going to draw a blank in a minute here. Uh, here we go. It's www.joseph.film. And if you feel like you're struggling in your self-worth, being postured, your mindset, how do I, you know, pivot from something? I highly suggest that you go take a look at this clip before it's removed because it is a short clip. Um, and to actually see a modern day miracle and to see the fruitation of this miracle come to light Gosh, it will give you hope. It will give you a sense of the greater being that's really in control. We're never in control. Even with our mindset, you know, was a, you have to be in control of your mindset. You have to set yourself up. Don't you think you have to set yourself for a good mindset? But ultimately, we get derailed, right? Because we're not in control. We're only in control of our actions and how we react to something. Don't you think, Jen? Yes, and, and it really goes back to the commitment to your vision. And I, just as a sidebar, I have something funny to say about dreams in just a moment, you guys will crack up. But it really does have something to say about the commitment because if I had not, 
and we all know, well, friends who really know me, my family, I am typically shy by nature. I know that's hard for some people to imagine, but it's true. It but is what, true. I, what I mean by that is if I had not pushed myself last year, if I had not done certain things, I wouldn't be where I am today. And as with the Knockout Shelley project, I knew I was going to go into that making mistakes. I expected that. And, you know, some people say, you know, hey, if you expect that you're going to do bad. No, I didn't do bad. What I'm saying is it was such a fear of mine, but I knew that it was something that I want to, wanted to conquer, not just for myself, but for others. That's how important my commitment was to the vision of the Knockout Shelley Project. So my message in saying that is, I know that there, <coughs> excuse me, that there are people out there who want to achieve something, whatever that something is. Maybe you would love to write a book. Maybe you're like, I don't know, writing my own book right now seems a little overwhelming. Well, why not join an anthology, which we'll be talking about all this week. A great way to segue into that. So sometimes maybe you do have that shy type of personality where you need to take the steps to commit to your progress or your process of creativity to inspire others to do the same. Shuddy. No, there goes the birdie, the birdie, birdie, birdie. But that is so true. And I, and I think we tend to, as a society, think, well, it's not going to happen to me. I don't have the luck of the drawer. I'm not in the right place at the right time. No, a lot of successful people have had had such a, a vision of the and, and be spot on with their mindset, regardless of what was going on. The, the doubters, the Debbie Downers, the people saying that you can't do it. Um, you'll never, you know, it's going to take you forever to, to accomplish that. How many of you, how many of you can relate to that? I'm sure a lot of you can, a lot of our uh, listeners and audience, knowing that you sparked on some sort of journey and maybe you weren't getting the support or, or people doubted you, but you knew in your heart, I've, I've got to see it through. I, I promised myself. And I think part of having a great mindset is having that great relationship and that conversation with yourself, you know, starting off with love, you know, self-love, which is, you know, it, it's not a thing from the 60s, you know, the, you know, power to the people and, you know, rock and roll and free love, self-love, um, accepting your limitations, but don't let the limitations keep you limitless. You may just have to take those limitations and pivot just enough just enough to still reach that goal or that vision you just might have to do it a different way that you didn't think about or you know if it's a workout if it's uh, something that you're trying to accomplish uh, a transformation you know not everyone fits you know the whole square and they putting a square or a circle in a whatever that there's right. a circle in a peg hole i don't know how it goes yeah we know what you yeah. yeah right the point being don't give up on yourself you know, if you've got to pivot from something and the, the other piece to that, you know, I've gotten the question a, a couple of times this weekend regarding mindset, because I was chatting with different people about our different themes. And one of them was, how do you deal with other people that, you know, you didn't know this about them, or maybe the last 12 months is really you found out things about people that you always connected with and you're like, hmm. You know, whether it was the politics, whether whatever it may be, the virus, the, the people's mindset. And now you realize I'm not really in sync with that person. And so many people, the, you know, the taboo subjects, remember the taboo subjects, you don't talk religion, you don't talk politics. Uh, those were kind of the themes forever, it seems like. And now people are more, because of social media and whatnot, are more uh, confident and postured in their mindset that they can chat about those things. But what I always say to people is, no, you don't necessarily purposely give up on someone or give up on a relationship, but it's okay to pause from a relationship. It's okay to say, you know what? Our alignment's just not there. And when I'm with this person, 
their viewpoints are so different. It always spills over into everything that I'm doing. It messes with my mindset. It, 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 I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm scared or I'm, I, I don't know how to deal with it. It is okay. And when you realize that it's impacting your health and wellness, which includes your mindset, it's a kind of pause, break, or even deviate from that relationship. Don't you think? I mean, sometimes you have to let things go in order for your own self-preservation of your mindset. Well, exactly, because, you know, think of the energy that is expended to, for instance, maybe somebody that does have a different viewpoint from you that they're constantly, for instance, coming up in your Facebook feed, and it's always a Debbie Downer kind of situation. Well, you, you have two choices, you can either respond or not respond, or you can just hit the snooze button. And that takes the pressure off of you, perhaps maybe saying some things that you may not want to say to that person to keep that validation of whatever that contact is. That's good energy. Now, if it's to the point, obviously, where it's not going to be beneficial to you, it's not going to be beneficial to the other person, and it's just, you know, taking a nose dive. Well, that's, you know, a different type of situation, definitely a one on one. That's a thing that you have to work out on how you want to handle that. <clears throat> I know that in certain situations, you know, being visible, being online, we're, we're this digital age although it's been around for quite some time now, really has evolved over the last year. Sure has. And I think, you know, don't you feel, I think probably if someone was to say to me, what is the number one thing of social media that's really transformed over the last year? I think it's send, the word send. So what do I mean by the word send? A click of a button. I think most of us will agree that sometimes it's okay to not hit the send button, pause, take a break, reread your thoughts that you've typed out. Uh, with so many digital warriors out there, I always say, you know, do you have all the facts? You know, is it coherent? Are you also adding value to what you're sharing? And it's not just a rant. Because I mean, I've done a rant. I will be the first to admit it. And some people are not postured enough to say, oh, you did a rant and you didn't make sense or I didn't, it wasn't well received. That shows the human side of us. And how do you get that when you have a good mindset to say, hey, I screwed up. I said the wrong thing or it wasn't. They didn't have all the accurate information or I flew off the handle. I think the problem of why social media has really uh, transpired the, the really the, the whole last year is because it's so instant. It's too quick almost. Don't you think? Like you hit the send button, like, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. And it, and yes. Delete, 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 delete. And, and go ahead. I have a great suggestion. When you are feeling that frustration. This is for anybody. And I think this is a perfect wellness diva 4.0 suggestion. Type it out like you mean business. Like if you have to pound those fingers on the keyboard, type it out, email it to yourself, delay the send to yourself by two hours. That'll give you a cooling off period. Boom. It shows up in your inbox and you're like, what the hell was I thinking? Delete. So you've had, and I don't want to say you've had that satisfaction because in this digital age, everything is at the click of a button. It goes that fast, right? Like for instance, the book uploaded at KDB, boom, it's all over the world, right? Why not turn that around to your advantage? Go through those motions so that you can work through it to go forward, not go backward. So you forward it to yourself, just to yourself. Two hours later, you look at it and go, delete. You know what I do, which is another really great tool, 
is before I, I if I know now that I'm gonna post something and I'm like in the in the heat of the moment or in the happiness of the passion, whatever it is, I actually change the setting of who sees it to only me. So I'm the only one that can see it. That's the first thing I do before I'm gonna post something. And so now it's in my newsfeed, but I'm the only one that can see it. And I can revert back to it. And like you said, kind of do the same analogy of the email. And I'll go look on my, you know, wall or whatever, like, go oh, thank the Lord I didn't make that public. And then I delete it and or, hey, you know what? What I was trying to impact and really open someone's eyes or point of view to I just got to, I got to, I got to tweak what I wrote. I'm going to maybe soften it up a little bit. I'm going to change some wording. So I love the fact that that's also in our ability. If you don't want to do the whole email thing, but I kind of like the email thing too. It gives you again, that time to digest your feelings and with a clear mindset, because not all, our mindset's not always clear. We're, we're over inundated with alerts and, you know, news and you know, Instagram and you've got, you know, Facebook and you've got all these different platforms now. Y your mind sometimes is your mindset spinning. Like, well, who do I answer first? Who do I got to get to first? And a lot of times when you hit that pause buzz button, I'm going to bet and probably at least for myself, I'm only speaking for myself, nine out of 10 times, I'm either deleting it or I'm editing it. Like there's no, I don't just post it. I'm either deleting it or editing it. And that tells you, obviously, you know that, you know, if your mindset is one thing, two hours later, it really can skip a beat. The two hours, 120 minutes, that's nothing. To, to rework your emotional being, but also the brain. I have a funny question to ask. When you post it on Facebook and like you said, so only you can see it, do you have to fact check your, yourself before you do that? I, 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 you, you do sometimes. I mean, because sometimes when you're, you're posting something, you're going either on share emotion or you heard it or you saw an article. Right. And you, how many times have we said, we've seen articles, they look real, but we know how the media works. <laughs> And we, after we've done some digging, we find out it's wrong. So I don't, I don't have a, uh, I do not, and I've never had a problem with saying, "Ooh, I, I didn't dig, I didn't dig deep enough into that," or maybe the leads that I got or the information I received was inaccurate. I don't have a problem with that, but not everyone is um, like I don't get, I don't get angry with other people criticizing me or or correcting me, and I don't know why that is. I just. I, if it's Johnny doing it, yeah, that's a whole different ball game. Oh, but we, but just a sidebar, another sidebar. There are ears amongst us, <laughs> so we get ears in the room. Yeah, Gary is in the room. Oh, is what the room. Hell you got to say it's so bright. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's my husband. He's that's a genius. Brother, huh? I love it, but it, it, it is so true that when you. When you when you're postured enough, you don't mind somebody critiquing you, because I believe, you know, and I, I don't like the word criticize. I like the word critique better because sometimes people are criticizing without critiquing, which is two different things. So there's nothing wrong with critiquing, but the other issue, obviously, with social media is you don't hear the inflection of the person's voice. You don't hear how they're articulating something. You don't hear the tone. Is it anger? Is it rich in kindness? Is it rich in happiness? Is it just mean and vicious or pissed off? I mean, you only get that when you're actually having a live conversation with someone. So I really think there's, there's the ups and downs of how social media, how our world is impacting our mindset. But I truly believe, especially because of, of seeing Alex miracle really come to life, that that should bring up the possibility of hope to so many people where we're still kind of going down that path. When are we getting back to normal? This is still not normal in my eyes. And I hate, I would have to say, I don't hate anything. So I, I gotta be clear on that. I dislike the phrase new normal because 
I don't believe this is a any kind of normal. You know, watching a president who is the you know the leader of the free world fall upstairs to an airplane, and everyone just thinking that that's normal. That is not normal, um, and it's sad. Um, wearing double mask, sad. And I have a theory about that. You want to hear my theory about the double mask? Yes. And all I'm going to say about that is theater. <laughs> I truly believe, and I could be way off base with this. I truly believe for those states like myself, the state that I live in now is Florida, where the mass mandating was much different in, in different segments. You know, obviously early on, everyone was wearing masks and it slowly setting, started to, to settle down to a certain degree when we realized and got understanding that vitamin C helps, vitamin D. Um, mouthwash uh, to kill the germs in your mouth, washing hands, a lot of common sense things. So I truly believe they made, and I, I'd be interested to find out the manufacturers of the masks, because I don't know who makes them, if there's a connection to somebody political, number one. Uh, but number two, I think that they manufactured millions millions and as we've been coming out of this virus and don't let anyone kid you the pan pandemic is over there is no more pandemic going on but i truly believe that they over uh manufactured and now they've got who wants to be stuck with all them flipping masks now obviously the one industry that does use a lot of masks as we know is is scientists and, and ors and hospitals but as a whole, I think that they manufactured. I mean, my theory is they manufactured so many, they don't want to get stuck with them and they want to still make a penny off of them. So why not now come up with a theory, double mask? Because I didn't believe in one mask. I sure as shoot are not believing in two. And that's, but again, if, if I also say, if it makes you feel confident and I guess safe, wear the mask. Just don't rain on my parade about getting getting mad, upset with me because I choose not to. Now, that's not to say that I don't wear, I wear a mask. Obviously, on the airplane, I've flown. Uh, as of December, I had flown, I believe it was 21 times. When I say 21 times, 21 one ways. So I've been on an airplane 21 times in the last 12 months. I never quarantined. I never was sick. I only tested once uh, for, for my grandson's sake uh, and was negative, obviously. So yes, I obey those rules uh, because the consequences are I'm not getting on the plane. So I'm not a fool. However, there are more and more people now that are challenging and they may have like say mask signs up and people say, I'm done with this. I'm so over this. I'm not wearing a mask outside. Now I did go to Disney and I'm hoping that our governor, Governor DeSantis will, will Although we, we have no statewide mask mandate, he's, he has led it to uh, the decision making of the counties. And I hope he changes that because people are just, they're, they're over with it. They're done with it. The sad thing about Disney was every 15 minutes you were getting like a, for me, felt like I was in communist land. And don't forget, you got to have your mask up. And if it's not over your nose and everyone knows when I wear one, it's you know, I, I press it in, I do all of that, and I'm tying them extra, and then my ears are killing me, I can't stand it. So I'm hoping that more people, and I think that's what's happening, more people are, they're just, they've, they've had enough. And then there's other people that swear by them, not from scientific proof, but because they truly believe that's the only way to keep them safe. So it's kind of one of those things, what, do what floats your boat kind of a thing, um, but I, uh, was never a true mask wearer. Um, you know, if, if I was around somebody that was in a higher risk category, of course, um, I don't want, I don't want them to feel uncomfortable around me. So yeah, I would put the mask on. Uh, there was a few times where I wore them in grocery stores, but for the most part, I never did. Not that I'm a rule breaker, but I just, I just, okay, let's not go there. Just be, you know, I just could not. You know, that's me. And and to prove that, one of the times I was up in Connecticut and we happened to be going shopping for daddy and we went to a medical supply company. And I don't know if you remember this, but it was you, Fran, our, our yeah. older brother and, and myself. And I'm like, hey, because everyone knows how much I love, love doing selfies. 
And Fran was so worried. Our brother uh, is a warrior. He, he uh, helps with the Red Cross and uh, he, he does so much goodness for his community. Carol said, you have to put the mask on. No. Carol said, you have to put the mask on. No, watch me. <laughs> so Fran goes, oh God, here we go. So we go into the drugstore. I said, let's do a selfie. So the Janice and Fran had the, the mask on. Mine, of course, was, I was wearing it. It was around my neck. So I did, I did a selfie. And what happened? I walked the entire drugstore, not wearing a mask, and not one person said anything. Not one. Hmm. What does that tell you? <laughs> Either they thought she was cray cray, me, me, or they didn't want to, they didn't want to address the issue. But the point being is no one threw me out. And right. like I said, if someone was to say, hey, look it, you want to shop here, we want you to shop here, but you know, we're we're serious, you have to wear the mask, then I would make an intelligent decision. Do I do I really need what I need from that particular store, or can I buy it elsewhere and or go to another store that sells the same thing that's not gonna bug me about the mask? So, and I, I, I try to, uh, you know, make sure those that are really worried, I do the social distancing, which I think that's kind of quite great too, but I follow the rules to some degree. To some degree. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> so yeah. sidebar, yes. we're talking about dreams. Yes. So I have a funny. Oh, good. I love a funny. Who doesn't like a funny on a Monday mindset? So when we get in bed at night, I do have a TV in my room. I've loved doing that for years. That's just me. I know a lot of people don't do that. I love it. I happen to fall asleep before Gary. And apparently I love to talk in my sleep. So last night I fall asleep before Gary, I don't remember what program he was watching, but all of a sudden he, now this is Gary telling me this this morning. He said, how were your dreams last night? I'm like what? And I'm no, trust me, I'm no peach in the morning. I just like, don't even bother me. Don't look at me. I don't want to talk to you kind of person. I'm like, what? Our mother was like that. And he said, did you, did you have any dreams last night? I said, none that I can remember. I said, I mean, I slept really good the last couple of nights. I haven't because of my foot, but I'm much better by the way. <laughs> and he looks at me. Yeah. And he looks at me and says, I don't know who you were fighting with. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, well, did I, was I talking in my sleep? Oh, you not only talk to you in your sleep, all of a sudden it was clear as day and I'm wh whatever show he was watching and you say, and there was a moment of pause. So the TV was silent. All, all of a sudden I say, F you have no recollection of it. Wow. I don't know, but I had a good night's sleep. That is so funny. And you wonder, cause he, he you hear a lot of people that, you know, talk in their sleep, walk in their sleep, and they don't remember any of it. <laughs> the only time I really remembered walking in my sleep, I used to be a big sleepwalker. Hmm. Is... I, wonder there, I wonder if there's a correlation between people that talk in their sleep, they also walk in their sleep, do you think? I was wondering that myself, but I did wake up when I fell down the stairs. I was like, what the heck just happened? That's that was weird. Scary. Yeah, you have to get a you have to get a baby gate in here. Yeah, my you, uh, my landlord had it. Fifty nine years old and you need a baby gate. Hmm. Well, no, this was year. This was probably about. Uh, well, it was shortly before I met Gary, so I was living oh, yes, in, in your other your other apartment. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I was not nearly as young as I am now. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. we don't want you. We don't want you falling down the stairs or stuff. Yeah, I've had enough in my fifties. Like, yeah. thank yeah, you, you very much. You, yeah, you, 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 you have, and some people just, you know, in their fifties, that's when things start to shift, break, 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 and break. And, and it move. all started. We had a discussion about this a couple of days ago. It was Saturday. We went to J. Roo's for a cocktail. Went with GA, and we. Gary and I were talking about all the weird things 
that have happened and the subject of my 50s came up and I said well you know it's it's your fault you and Carol Sue had a surprise 50th birthday party for me and <laughs> that was at the old J Ruse. that's right there that's my where it started I was wearing my high, high heels and it was before, and I want to make this clear to everyone. It was before I started drinking, went out on the dance floor because primetime was playing there. Somebody spilled a drink and I slipped, landed on my shoulder. I immediately knew I tore the rotator cuff. Two months later, shoulder operation, 10 months later, second operation. And I'm not going to get into all this stuff, but you know, he's like, boy, it, 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 now you're blaming your 50s on me and i'm like yes i am well you know some people have have that you know knock on wood other than you know the shoulder um but i was so blessed that i really worked really hard at it that i didn't have to have surgery and i worked really hard not to get another cortisone shot because i am not you know and and anyone that knows me knows I'm not a good patient so much so you know it, with, with all my mindset and health and wellness background I make sure that whatever doctor I'm seeing and if it is going to involve something that requires something that I really don't want I make sure to have them note the chart that I'm not a good patient because I don't want them to uh, you know not be prepared because if I'm stressed out I, I'm not a shot person. That's why um, it's a miracle that I have pierced ears. Uh, I, I did it, and I don't even remember. I was so young when I did it, but I, I'm not a needle person. I could never be someone to get a tattoo. It's just never going to happen because I'm definitely afraid of needles. I don't know what it is, but I, I gave blood once, and I thought I was going to die. Um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not a good shot person. So when I ever got that cortisone shot, and I was like, well, I need a sling. And the doctor's like, you're out of your mind, lady. I said, I told you to note my chart. I need a sling. And he did. He put a sling on me and he was shaking his head. And he was like, oh my God, this one was wacky. But some people just have that, you know, that inner, uh, you know, and again, it's about being uh, like, I'm very postured in how I feel. I know I'm not going to be good at that. That's not my thing. I'm not a good patient. I don't like to be poked and prodded. You know, I'm just, you know, some people have no issues with that. Like the, the sight of blood is not my thing. Uh, but I really, really found that when the, an emergency arises that has nothing to do with me, I'm actually okay. Like if, you know, to assist somebody, um, you know, I may do the squeamish thing after the fact, but I think something kicks in that, you know, you've got to help or you've got to be of help to someone in need. Um, and I'm, I'm blessed that that goodness comes out of me because I'm not really good to myself that way. I just, yeah, not feeling it, just not my thing. So to get like any kind of shots, not my thing. I did do my tetanus shot, but I wonder how many of you out there of our listeners and our uh, viewers have that same issue. Like you just, shots aren't your thing and you're not a good patient. I wish there's more of us than we realize. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's a condition. <laughs> it, pro it, it may be, um, you know, some I mean, type of fear. Because aren't there all, like all these different fears? Like we, I, we, we, we know people that don't like tapping, tap, 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 or-, or Oh, like, the pen. The pen, the- That's for you, Quad. Well, not just for her, for Heather and Kelly. Heather and Kelly. With that noise. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I find it annoying. I kind of find it relaxing. Like I'm, ooh. But some people like that, that kind of stuff drives them kooky. There's also the fear of spiders. Yeah. Uh, which is, I think a lot snakes. of people, snakes. But so I wonder if the fear of shots, if there's a, there's a name for that. We'll have to look. We'll also look into that. Hey, if you know, if you're one of our viewers or listeners, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, and there's actually a name for it, let me know. But in addition to the shots, like just some people are not really good patients. I'm just, I'm, I'm one of them. So I try to avoid that. You know, I, I'm working very hard, and that's why I worked really hard on my shoulder, so I wouldn't have to have surgery because the whole going under, not my thing either. 
it's just not, you know, well, it's nobody's thing, but I have a fear about it. Like, am I going to wake up, you know, after having anesthesia? You get a little nervous like that. Yeah. And apparently when I woke up from anesthesia, when I had my hip operation, I was demanding, I'm like, where is my chocolate? You, I have no recollection of any of that. I've right, talked about I do, chocolate. Right. And I do remember when I had a C-section with Mike, <laughs> and I remember, you know, you start to come out of it. Mommy's face was right over my face. She goes, oh, thank you so much. You gave us a grandson. I'm like, what are you talking about? The kid is still in me. I don't feel right. And she says, no, you had the baby. I did not. And I don't, I don't remember any of that. And I remember I complained that my feet were so cold. I actually think I called mommy up to tell her to bring me socks, but I don't remember any of that. And she did, she brought socks so my feet were freezing because I'm one of those, see how many audience, like I have to sleep with socks. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I can't stand naked feet. <laughs> well, today is still a two sock day for me. I have my little peds on and then my real thick, <coughs> excuse me, nice warm socks and it, i heard it was beautiful there today here in new well, england having some gorgeous it water. is but it's cold it was cold this morning so you know i i am that person that is always clothed you know you see you've seen those memes of you know the coldest person you know everybody's sitting in their t-shirt and then you yeah. have the blanket around them that's me yeah i'm generally uh i don't get so cold but it's just my feet I don't like, I, I'm not, I don't like to wear bare feet, I like socks on 24 seven, unless obviously if I'm at the pool or whatever, you know, then I. Well, not. that's why I like wearing my toe socks in the um, spring and the summer. I'll wear those around the house. I know you don't like them. I love them. And I think they're stylish and <laughs> People have commented me on my toe socks, so. I don't know, just sticking your toes in their individual, like, a, I don't know, it's weird to me. And I don't, I would find it kind of uncomfortable. I don't know. Cloth in between your toes. You don't, you know, it's like, well, I shouldn't say. Well, it's like wearing a glove on a finger. Oh, your, yeah. 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 I wasn't going to say uh, that, but. But, you let's, know, toes have different sizes. So, like, is it one size fit all toe sh sneakers or socks? No, they're they're actually different sizes. I can't believe we're talking about toe socks. No socks. Well, at least we're not talking about the shitter, because usually, usually the the conversation goes to the shitter. I have something better to chat about. Okay. Potato chips. Gary went shopping last week. Uh oh. Did you, you know some chippies? He did. I mean, you know, he's so sweet, you know, oh, you know, I know that Janice likes this because lately he's been buying all the snacks that he can eat that I can't partake in because of the gluten. Right. So bought potato chips, not just like, you know, the no salt chips like, you know, we used to get for Poppy. Yeah. But it, the bigger bags. Oh, gosh. So I said to him today at lunch. That's it. No more potato chips. I'm giving them up for Lent. Now, obviously, I should have, you know, I didn't give up anything yet. And I was kind of thinking, what am I going to give up? I don't know. You're on your last leg with Lent, let me tell you. Well, hey, you know, I, I'm making it, in, you know, just like last week, you know, within six months of, you know, uh, daddy's passing and, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, getting... The book out there but um yeah the the chips so i'm like no more is I'm it good Friday, is it good friday this friday i don't, I don't think it's this friday when no. is easter um, Who knows when easter is? good friday is april 2nd so oh my week, god i'm week, such a bad catholic then a week from this friday so yeah you're uh you're really uh, pushing the envelope on Lent, girlfriend, just saying, because Lent's been going on for a while. But even with that, there's nothing wrong to say, you know what, I'm going to start fresh today and I'm not going to eat any more. Did you eat chips today? Well, of course I did. Well, then I guess you better get through the bag and then decide you're going to give them up. Well, no, I, I, I already declared. So, you know, and I'm OK with that. So it's all good. And, and if you're out there don't buy any potato chips 
and she's so sweet. I love her to death. She's a little fire fire cracker. She always uh, texts me after she's listening. She, I get kudos to her. She's preparing for her daughter's wedding. She has this vision of she bought this beautiful gown, beautiful gown, and she's been working really hard. She walk, power walks twice a day. And so she she listens to us on our podcast and frequently after she's done, she'll send me a, you know something funny or comment on something that we chatted about or what did you mean by that? Like tell me more. So she is one of our uh, most loyal fans, and we we so appreciate her diligence in making sure that uh, she makes sure she gets in her two sisters podcast time and. And uh, she's 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 so wonderful. So yeah, she frequently jokes about the Janice and Janice and her chips. Um, yeah. And it would be me and chocolate chip cookies, which I've been out of chocolate chip cookies now for about five days. And uh, you know, it was funny last night. John said, "Do we have any, do we have any cookies? Do we have any like, you know, you, we were looking for that sweet." And I haven't, I haven't gone grocery shopping. So I'm like, yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't bought them in about five days. But what is that, you know, the mindset that that goes into play is what is everyone thinking about? You know, what is keeping them um, not derailing on their health and wellness? And, you know, what kind of things would you suggest? So we love, absolutely love listening to our viewers and our listeners giving us their tidbits because we like to share them. So if you've got a go-to way of how you deal with not reaching for that snack or a way of kind of out of sight, out of mind. A lot of people have different ways that they deal with it. Please share it because guess what? I bet you there are other people that are feeling the same way and want that help, right? Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. And on that note, it's been great on this Mindset Monday. We got chatting a little bit, bit about this, a little bit about that. The life. fact that I, I obviously talk during my sleep. I like so much, so much different stuff. I'm not a good patient. Yeah, we gave you a lot of uh, insight into kind of our mindset of things that we love and things that we don't love and things that we don't even know that we're doing. Absolutely. Right. So tomorrow we have a guest. Don't we have a guest on tomorrow? I believe we do. And what yes, time we do. Uh, we are going on at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And our guest is Laura Bauman. Oh my God, she's such a little doll. And I will put her information up on the Facebook page at the toward the end of the day. And also just looking at my little cheat sheet here on april 1st so april fools when is that april fools oh that's a very sick day that's next no it's next, about two two weeks next, out no i think isn't that next thursday now no i don't even know what today is i mean that, that's wait a minute today's the 22nd so yeah i'm sorry yes you're right it'll be a week from this upcoming I mean, thursday thursday yes is a very significant time in our podcast history. Is that one year, our one year anniversary? No, it is not. It actually toward the end of the month, but it is our 200th episode. On April Fool's Day. Right. <laughs> oh my God. That's ridiculously funny. Kind of like yeah. that. Um, I, I, I call it my cheat sheet. Keep me uh, nice and organized here. Okay. On that note, we are going to wrap it up for you. We know that this has been a little extra long, perhaps unexpected, but we had a lot of chit chatting to do. My name is Janice, AKA Wellness Diva 4.0. It's Mindset Monday. Commit to your vision. And I am with two... Sisters. And this is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, Lady Canna, published author. Ooh, so excited for all my blessings. And I am with two sisters as well. And we thank you, thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of our heart for all your support. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, and I think we've chatted before, and I want to just make sure I get it out there. You do not have to have Kindle to download our book. 
Uh, we do have the link. A lot of people keep asking me that. They go, oh, I don't have Kindle. Do I have to get the app? No, you do not. You just uh, will make sure that we repeat the link. You can download it. Download a book for $1. And it still helps uh, keep our book relevant, which it's so relevant. There's so many great authors in there that really share a piece of their life that you know they might not have other than having this great awesome opportunity that our first time publisher uh, presented to us and that is Melillo Circle Publishing. So with that we will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. we have a guest speaker and what is tomorrow? Tomorrow is, tomorrow is Triumph Tuesday. You might triumph over something today that it's going to apply to tomorrow, tomorrow. So how cool is that? Spread the kindness, spread the love, be good to one, to one another. And, you know, just be that helpful person to somebody and smile. And don't forget to tell yourself you love you. With that, Carol Sue, over and out. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.